picking at the clamp. Ooh, look at this. Oh, look at that. They can sense the tension in your line. Four or five inches. I pair up with the three inch. Ladies and gentlemen, I am scared. The clam looks like this. The last scare I have was, of course, a spawning. That was, what, almost a month ago? This retraction did scare the crap out of me. I am terrified. I hope this is not the last video I'm making of this clam because this clam has been with me for, for quite a bit now. I'm trying to see the foot if anything's bothering it. Um, at the same time, I don't really want to bother it in case it's, it's nothing, you know, and then by kind of moving it around, it, is, it becomes something. I do want to check for pyramid snail. I kind of doubt I have it in the system. It is interesting, there's some kind of mucus on the edge of the shell. Is this what they call the pinch mental disease? I don't know, usually, you know, in pictures when I see something like this, it's like people are always like, oh, a clam is on its way out, you know. I hope that's really not the case. How would you blame him looking at you? Are you picking at the clam? I have not seen this guy pick at a clam for anybody who may be wondering. Let me rewind the clock a little bit. Um, every day and shoot, the whole week, whole month, the clam looks perfect, open nicely. This morning I saw one side retract, this side, which was odd because nothing here. An enemy has obviously been moved out of this tank. Uh, everything seems fine. And around lunchtime now, I see the whole mental is kind of retracted. That was actually the first time the algae blendy I saw perching on the clam. I wonder if somewhat related, even though I have not seen the blendy picking at the clam at all. Usually it's kind of stick close to the frags here and close to the algae clip, so don't know what's going on. All right, I saw it. It was the algae blendy. I saw it. He took two big bites at the uh, mantle of the clam and caused it to shut. God, that sucks. I've heard of um, bicolor blendy picking at clam mantles. I've had algae blending before, but never, never had this issue. I'll do reenactments. Here's the algae blending. It was kind of nipping at the side of the shell and then just perch here. And as I'm looking at it, it swam up, pick, pick at one side, the clam react a little bit, and then picked in the middle and the clam just almost completely shut and then it kind of swam away. That's the... Uh, million dollar reenactment. You guys like it? This is like three hours later. Clam is shut even more now. This guy's coming out. If you guys are a long time follower of the channel, you should be really familiar with this no-nonsense acrylic fish trap. Uh, nothing fancy, just a door that'll slide down being held up by a fishing line. In the back, this time I clip a algae. Unfortunately, I do have this whole magnet holding the whole trap in place. Uh, again, this is nothing fancy, just a acrylic box with a sliding door with a fishing line holding it. And I have it clipped to the, to the chair right now. I'm trying to get this guy. Um, I'm hoping that the algae itself would entice him in. Uh, my secondary target is actually the hippo tang as well, now that I have a trap in place, simply because hippo tang, uh, as they get to a certain size, they have a tendency to start nipping. Um, not saying that this guy is, but it's Look at this. Oh, look at that. Finally caught him in act. That was it. So, so we have the fish trap. I'm starting to think maybe I should move the fish trap to above the clam, just so that has something to perch on. But this guy is pretty curious, pretty bold. So I feel like it's gonna venture over here as well. Dude, this guy is just fearless. He's just perching, perching, nipping and everything. I almost feel like I should just put a mirror in the fish trap and I would just go right in. Look at, look at all of the fish. They're all curious, look at that. Come on, little buddy. Yep, you want it. You want it. We got a nice home for you in the mangrove tank. It's empty right now, it's perfect. Look, you got a buddy. You got a buddy. Is he being cleaned by the yellow line goby? What is going on? Dude, this is a strange tank. I think we should be we should be able to catch him pretty quickly. This this one has no fear. He just got to find the right entrance. Yep, you're looking at it. Your buddy yellow line gopi went in already. It's safe. All right, this guy. I've done the bottom, the right sides. Now the top. I just need to go from the left, and then we are good. Welcome to Aquarium Supply Online. Based in the U.S., we're your one-stop shop for premium, hand-selected saltwater and freshwater aquarium supplies. 
Every purchase earns points for exclusive discounts, and our monthly promo codes offer added savings. Ready to transform your underwater space? Dive into a world of quality, affordability, and unrivaled customer service at AquariumSupplyOnline.com. Your journey to a vibrant aquatic oasis begins here. Is it? I'm gonna let him go in and actually pick at the algae first before I drop the trap. It's just gonna get bolder and bolder. I'm gonna be calm and just take it easy. Whew, control my breathing. I feel like it's like, just like walking a dog, they can sense the tension in your line. Go in, buddy. You in there already. Just go in. Yeah, let me talk some more trash. No, I'm gonna wait for his head to start picking at the seaweed. Nina, do you think it's time to pull it? No, I'm gonna wait for the head to turn first because he can still go out. Okay. Good enough. Nope, head did not turn yet. Head did not turn yet. Head did not turn yet. Go back the other way, buddy. I think he's confused. He's just chilling in the trap. Maybe I should drop it? In three, two. Nope, a little bit too close. Trap is not dropping. Door's not coming down. I think the angle is bad. Ah! Oh, okay, we're gonna wait for her to go back in. Angle is bad, it did not slide down. So that was a uh, missed opportunity. I let go and tried to wiggle a little bit, but the trap did not fall. So I think I need to uh, lift my hand up a little bit higher because the angle is a little bit, um, it's too much friction, it's not dropping. But I'm, uh, I'm optimistic that we're gonna get another shot at this. Okay, here's one more go at it. Nina's crying, Nina's crying, Nina's crying, but she's, she's okay now. I think, she, I think it's in there. I think it's in there. Yup, 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 yup. It's eating now. Close, that's it, game over. Goodbye, sayonara. There he is. I'll let him enjoy it a little bit. <laughs> Nina, we caught the fish. That was quick, we caught it. We caught it, we caught it, we caught it. We caught it, we caught it. Where? Can you see him? There, 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 he doesn't even know what's going on. Look at that. Yes, yes, yes. All right, you know what? Let's, uh, we'll bring Nina upstairs first and then we'll bring Mama. Okay, Nina's upstairs. I guess by now the blendy finally realized something is up. So now I'm gonna be really careful because I've fudged up this step before. Not, not once, but twice. Uh, I need to really carefully lift the gate up without opening the, well, lift the cage up without opening the gate. Otherwise, it's just gonna swim out. I'm gonna have the blenny kind of live in the mangrove tank for now um, until I figure something else out. Hopefully the clam will have a full recovery. And if it unfortunately does not make it, I guess the blenny can come right back here. We'll see. All right, well, anyways, we'll check this guy out in the mangrove tank. All right, fellas, we are once again on a road trip today. We're gonna check out the Virginia Living Museum. It's gonna be yeah! awesome. I bought this. Unfortunately, our car did not have vents. That's a mistake on my part. Once again, we have a supercharger, but uh, I think we're ready to go. I don't know what they're doing. I don't like it.
one eternity later. We're gonna do some really quick fragging today of the toll stool, specifically that cluster back there. The pile is closed right now, but it is a neon green toll stool. It's absolutely beautiful. It came from the mangrove tank. It just got way too large. Started touching the finger leather and then not playing nice together. Time right now is to frag this guy up, bring maybe two or three small frags back to the mangrove tank because this corals once again, even though it's more common coral, is absolutely beautiful. Boy. I also need to pull maybe three small frags from the Bahama Llama Weeping Willow as well that I promised people it was about time I fulfilled the promise now that it has grown back from the fragging session. Speaking of leather coral, this is the Japanese Weeping Willow that I got from Red Frog when we drove down to, or drove up to Canada, Toronto. And as you can see, the polyps are steadily getting longer. So I can't wait to see how this coral look in a couple more months. We'll do a more thorough tank update later in this video, but for now I'm gonna go ahead and frag this up. In fact, I'm not even sure when this video is gonna come out because my desktop computer completely died. I cannot even boot in a computer, even with a USB stick. So something is up, I'll have to fix it. So hopefully it doesn't take that long so at least I can get this video up at some point soonish ish Just like last time, my favorite tool in terms of mounting leather frags these days are these really, really, really cheap uh, net pots. These are three inch net pots. I will have a link in the video description below. This is like 15 bucks for 20 or something like that. Ridiculous, really, really cheap. And I paired them up with two inch frag disc. Now the only difference is that last time I used ceramic disc and those are almost impossible to cut with just like a handheld bone cutter. So this time around, I switched things up. I went with the Ocean's Wonders brands. Uh, I've been using their frag plug and they're really porous. What I like about it is number one, of course, you get a uh, beneficial bacteria that can colonize a little bit better because material is porous. And number two, they're way easy to cut with a bone cutter because they're not like solid like the ceramic disc that I was using. So these are the two inch and um, I pair up with the three inch net pots and they are the perfect little uh, mushroom cage or leather cage, whatever you want to attach. First thing first, let's go ahead and get the uh, Bahama Llama whipping burrito. Whoa. Stem got fat, look at that. I'm trying to pull three frags from this. Um, in the ideal world, I probably want to wait a little bit longer, but I think it'll be okay. I'll just chop three pieces. Fragging leather coral, you don't really need anything crazy. I've done this before. Just need a nice sharp pair of scissors that your wife's uh, approved you of using. That's one, two, and let me see, three. That's it. Two of the pieces are actually pretty big. I feel like I could even slice them in half uh, once they attach. We'll see how it goes. Dude, it's not coming out. Perfect timing. Kid is crying. <laughs> Gotta go. All right, here's a big one. My goodness, look at this. The girth feels familiar. We are essentially just gonna cut up the crown because the crown is so overgrown, it had a lot of folds to make things a lot easier. For example, like, like this chunk right here. Perfect. Some people just lop off the whole crown and chop it up. Definitely do that too. Or cut, cut a ring around the crown and cut it up, which is what I did for the um, Bahama Llama Whipping Willow before, which of course also works. But for me, let me see. Once again, the key is to have a really nice sharp pair of scissor. And the smell, I don't like the smell of soft corals at all when they're out of the water. I feel like these pieces are pretty big. So two pieces per basket may be a little bit too much, but we'll see how it works out. If it comes to be, becomes too crowded, we can always um, move one of them out. Pretty much cut a ring around the stem anyways. So we left some of the uh, middle portion, some of the polyps here, just so that we have something to look at on the stem. This is a big stem, dude. All right, so there are the donors, Bahama Lama Reaping Willow and then the uh, Neon green toaster got shoved all the way in the corner. I did fix it a little bit after filming this. And we have six baskets. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm just jamming them wherever the flow is decent because you want decent flow to wash away the gunks for them to heal. So we'll see how it goes. I feel like the um, neon green toaster frags may be too packed having two of them because they're pretty nice sized frags. So I may have to move them later on, but for now, let's go ahead and let them heal up. And I am absolutely running carbon full time. 
while this is going on because uh, as you know, leather coral, they have toxins and especially when you chop them up like this and I did two, not just one, um, I went pretty aggressive. So I definitely wanna make sure the carbon reactor is running full time while uh, this is healing for at least the next couple days. Two weeks later. Let's go ahead and take a look real quick. The Bahama Lama's Weeping Willow has always done really well in terms of fragging and attaching. Look at this. It is already firmly attached to the uh, substrate or the frag disc that I use. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this. This one is actually pretty large, like I mentioned, uh, while fragging, at least I think I did. So what I'm gonna do is actually just use a razor blade and cut it in half. I'm not gonna uh, break up the frag disc yet, but I'm just gonna slice it in half, let them heal, and then break up the frag disc. This way I feel like we have a, a better, better connecting point. Back here is the second basket with two pieces of whipping willow. And I think one of them is kinda attaching to the plastic basket as well, but I feel like they also have a, also a good strong attachment to the frag disc. We're gonna pull it a little bit later for a closer look. I think they're ready to come out of the baskets. Neon green toadstool, it's more like unknown for me because this is the fr first time I'm fragging this particular one. Oh, it got wedged. Oh, it's still kinda loose. A few, yeah, I think it's still kind of loose. Well, one one piece is kind of attaching. The back piece may be a little bit too large. Maybe it's not even touching the uh, disc. Well, something attached. I think something attached. Well, we'll take a, we'll pull it and we'll take a closer look. For myself personally, as soon as the frag gets uh, stick on enough of the substrate and won't get blown away, I like to remove them from the, from the basket ASAP. Let's take a look at these guys right here. Oh yeah, this guy, this guy should be ready. And I see that part of it is kind of attaching to a basket as well. So thankfully, it looks like the neon green toadstool is also, oh, that one is still loose. You see it's kind of bouncing up and down a little bit. Yeah, so thankfully the neon green toadstool is not as picky about being chopped up. This one may be, I'm not too confident in this one because I jam a lot of stuff. Yeah, look, it's still loose. They all lose actually. Yeah, so at least they're not rotting away. Yeah, compared to the Fiji yellow leather, these are notoriously hard to frag and get them to attach. These took a while. This guy, that guy, and I have a smaller frag that's still in the back. So compared to those, uh, thankfully the neon green toadstool is a lot closer to the uh, Bahama Lama Sweeping Willow. They just kind of frag really easily, heal up nicely, and then just attach. Seem seems to be pretty quickly. Uh, so that's a blessing. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and pull out some of the corals that are already attached to the disc. I'm gonna use a razor blade to slice them in half if they're too big and just place them directly on the sand bed and free up some room because as you can see, some of these guys are not attached yet. Um, it's either because the basket is a little bit too crowded or the positioning is not good because this area has nice flow versus he right there is like no flow at all. So I'm gonna move these guy out and move these guy in. Hopefully they'll get attached within the next week or two. Oh, this back there as well, there's a chunk, but that does not look like it has attached. Four to six weeks later. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it has been about a month, month and a half since I've fragged up the Leon green toadstool. I kind of like this format because I can actually bring you a whole story from beginning to almost at the end versus like update you every week with just piece, uh, pieces of it. So here you can see the frags has been successful. I have not lost any frags. In fact, I've mounted some of these successfully and already gave them away. Um, you see these guys are ready to go and I still have three pieces, I believe, in the frag basket. And this is probably, probably my fault, simply because I shoved too many frags into a basket. I don't, there are a lot of frags I made. I couldn't, I don't want a bunch of baskets. So I try to fit two. But as, um, as a result, a lot of them kind of interfere with each other. Like as one expanded, probably squeeze the other one out from touching the frag plug or frag disc. So not all of them has attached properly. So half, half of them are pretty much good to go. I have one upstairs that I gave away two already. I got another piece back there that is also ready to go. And it's interesting to see how they developed based on where they are. You see the ones all the way in the back in the shade, it developed longer tentacles and also expanded a lot more versus the ones up here, the color is a little bit more intense and the tentacle is a little bit stubbier. So these are good to go. And also over here, we have the uh, Pama Lama's Weeping Willow. I already gave away two and these are healing really nicely. Um, these I believe are all spoken for at the moment, um, but these frag and attach so well, it's just a matter of time until I can create more. And over there, we can take a quick look at the mother colony and 
the pile of a slowly growing back out. These are really slow grower for me, as far as ladder goes. Uh, the uh, Bahama Llamas Weeping Willow is just really slow growing, but they do frag well, they do mount well. I have not lost any frag yet. Up here, we can also take a look at the Fiji Yellow Leather that I fragged a while back. I tried to keep them up high, I got another piece right there, hoping that they will get enough of a punch of light to redevelop the yellow canary color. But so far, no luck, unfortunately. But uh, they seem to like, enjoy the high light, so I will at least keep one piece there. I may move that piece back down a little bit just to see if it does anything to the color morph. Finally, we also got to say hi to our 